Your ordered statistics. So, let us just begin with the first one. So, if you have, um, if you want to find the uh, density function, uh, so cumulative, we will start with CDF, because after, if once we have obtained this, we can obtain the uh, PDF also. So, here um, F x j uh, is the um, CDF for the jth ordered statistic. So, which means, and so uh, the value F x j x means that this is the probability of x j being less than or equal to x. And what does this mean? If this is the jth ordered statistic, that means up to is 1, 2, x 1, x 2, up to x j, they should all be less than or equal to x at least. So, at least j of the x 1, x 2, x n should be less than or equal to x, right. More can be less than <coughs> x, but at least since I am saying I am comp computing the probability that x j should be less than or equal to x, that means at least j of x 1, x 2, x n should be less than or equal to x. So, now uh, I can write since it is at least, so it can be j, j plus 1, j plus 2, which are less than or equal to x. So, therefore, this probability can be written as summation i varying from j to n, the probability of exactly i of x 1, x 2, x n are less than or equal to x. So, it should be clear, right. So, therefore, this implies that I can write this probability as n c i, because out of the n you are choosing i, any of the i can be less than or equal to x. So, n c i and then this is f i x, because um, i of them you want to be less than or equal to x. So, this is this into 1 minus f x. So, the remaining n minus i are greater than or equal to x. So, because exactly i of them are less than x. So, therefore, remaining n minus i are greater than or equal to x. So, therefore, um, this will be the probability of that. So, you are summing this up, right. And now, let us give it a um, more concise form. So, uh, because this is of course, very unwieldy, you cannot. So, now, um, consider this is integral. And this is where you should see how we can relate, uh, so, you know, uh, summations with integrals and so on. So, consider the integral j n c j. 0 to f x t raise to j minus 1, 1 minus t raise to n minus j d t. And let me call this integral as i of j minus 1. So, this index and n minus j index of 1 minus the power of 1 minus t. Now, if you integrate by parts, so integration by parts will give uh, here let me treat this as the first function. So, integral of this will be j upon t j upon j, then 1 minus t raise to n minus j, this computed from 0 to f x, right, plus n minus j upon j 0 to f x t j and derivative of the second function. So, which will be n minus, uh, <coughs> uh, okay, uh, yeah. So, the derivative would be n minus j 1 minus t raise to n minus j minus 1. So, this is what you get by integration by parts. So, here of course, at 0 this is 0, at f x it will be. So, here I have written down. So, the j part, see this j cancels out, because both the terms have j in the denominator. So, this cancels out and you are left with n c j f j raise to x, right, 1 minus f x raise to n minus j plus uh, when you come to the integral, this will be n minus j into um, n c j n minus j i of j n minus j minus 1. Right, because j here, this was j minus 1. So, this is j minus 1, this was n minus j, this is n minus j minus 1. Okay. Now, very um, nicely, you can simply just write down um, uh, this expression and this, and manipulate the terms, and you can immediately see that this whole thing can be written like this, j plus 1 and j plus 1. And therefore, uh, this will then become, uh, uh, well, okay, the whole thing, uh, why, why did I write? Uh, because my i j is together. So, therefore, I do not have to write this term. This is not there, because okay, I am trying to say that uh, you manipulate this, even this is not correct. I should have written the integral here only. So, let me just say this is not correct. Okay. Uh, let me write, continue writing the integral n j. And uh, so, what were we getting here? Yeah. Uh, 0 to f x, 0 to f x t raise to j 1 minus t raise to n minus j minus 1 d t. Okay. And then I am saying that you manipulate this and you can write this as. 
So, let me rewrite this. This I am writing as, uh, because now you need uh, j plus 1 uh, n n minus j uh, n minus j minus 1 right 0 to f x t raise to j 1 minus t raise to n minus j minus 1 d t. So, this whole thing can be written as i of uh, j n minus j minus 1. Right. So, therefore, you see the iterative relationship is there. So, now this plus integral, where the um, uh, power of the term 1 minus t raised n minus j has now become n minus j minus 1, power of t is going up right from j minus 1 to j and so on. So, now iteratively when I write, I will again get a term, when I integrate this by parts, I will get a term here plus then that will be j plus 1 f x raise to j plus 1, then n minus j minus 1 and uh, uh, then another integral which will be i j plus 1 n minus j minus 2. So, this way iteratively when you do it, uh, this will this power will finally, become 0 and this will become your n. So, uh, therefore, you can show uh, this integral, this uh, summation is equivalent to the integral and therefore, what I have, this is what I have said that. So, finally, you can show that this integral that I wrote down in the beginning is equal to this sum, which is equal to your cumulative density function of x j. Okay. And uh, this you should have recognized by now, because this is, uh, see this is the um, beta integrand together with your uh, beta functions, when you want to make it a pdf. So, but so therefore, and since the limits are from 0 to f x, therefore, this is called incomplete beta function. Okay. Uh, and so, um, uh, finally, I have been able to replace, uh, get this probability, the cumulative density function in terms of this integral. Okay. So, when you differentiate both sides of uh, double star, you will get uh, f x j from here, it will be the p d f of x j and uh, this is a you know differentiation under integral sign. So, since this is a function of x, this will become f x here and otherwise you just substitute for t f x and so you get this thing. That for special cases, say for example, when your uh, uh, sample values are from uh, from a uniform distribution or uh, I think from may, may be from a, a normal distribution, we will see through examples, then it is easier to um, you know, get this uh, explicit expression for your um, uh, CDF and for your PDF. So, we will go through this example to see how um, uh, and of course, um, the question arises as to why are we doing this and you will see that uh, uh, often for example, okay, let us just go through this example and you will know why we are uh, talking about uh, obtaining a PDF for these order statistics. So, uh, if you have a sample of size 2 n plus 1 uh, independent and identically distributed random variables are observed, then the n plus first, see n uh, observation from this side and on this side. So, n plus first is on the center, smallest is called the sample median. So, and when you arrange them, order them and then the n plus was uh, one smallest is called the sample median. So, now uh, let us say we want to find out the, uh, so we have a sample of size 5 from uniform 0 1 is observed, find the probability that the sample median is between 1 by 3 and 2 by 3. And this uh, you know when you are handling data, large data, sometimes you are only interested in what the median of the sample size is. So, uh, so we will go about now um, obtaining uh, the expression, because you want to find the probability uh, of the sample median between 1 3 and 2 by 3. So, here you are actually talking about x 3, right? your j is 3 here, because sample size is 5. So, the median will be determined by the third ordered, third smallest statistic. So, x 3 is the median, when you have the sample of size 5. So, x 3 will represent the uh, median of the sample and uh, so by our formula, uh, see remember the formula was j n c j f x uh, capital f x raised to j minus 1, 1 minus f x n minus j minus 1 for f x j. Right. So, put j equal to 3 here, then this will give you um, 5 c 3 
uh, and uh, three times this, and then uh, uh, FX. Now, for a uniform distribution, uh, your P D F is just one between the uh, interval zero to one. So this is one, and this is uh, given by, uh, you know, for a uniform distribution. So proof of cauchy schwarz inequality. Now, expected value of y square can be greater than or equal to 0, it cannot be negative right, because this is y square. So, therefore, uh, when you integrate y square from 0 to minus infinity to infinity or whatever it is into f x, which is a p d f non negative. So, therefore, this must be non negative. So, now, but then uh, y square expected value of y square equal to 0 would imply so, the two things are possible either expected value of y square is 0 or expected value of y square is greater than 0. So, if it is 0, then this implies that probability of y equal to 0 is 1, right, because this expected value is this that means, see you will write value of y square the whatever possible values y square takes into uh, the probability of uh, the pro uh, y square taking a particular value and so on. So, this will imply that probability of y equal to 0 is 1, right. And hence, probability of x y equal to 0 is also 1, yes, because this, this is a certain event y taking the value 0 is a certain event. Hence, probability x y equal to 0 is also a certain event and so this probability 1. And therefore, this implies that expected value of x y is 0 because this takes the value 0 with probability 1. So, 1 into 0 plus I know or you integrate or whatever it is, whichever way you want to write it down, expected value of x y will be 0, right. And the inequality will therefore, will be satisfied, because this is 0 and this is 0. So, the inequality is satisfied, fine. So, therefore, we will um, now prove uh, the for the case, when the expected value of y square is positive. Um, x 1 less than or equal to x. So, I will look at the uh, opposite uh, event, which is greater than or equal to x. So, if um, first order statistic is greater than x, this implies that all the uh, sample values must be greater than or equal to x, right. So, this is equal to, um, uh, this is equal to what? Um, 1 minus f x raised to n, right because uh, if if the first order statistic is greater than x since it's the smallest all other values are bigger than x1 so all of them must satisfy this inequality and therefore this probability is 1 minus fx raised to n and we are interested in uh, finding out the um, uh, capital fx uh, cdf so that will become 1 minus of this right so 1 minus of this which is equal to 1 minus of this will give me my f x 1 x, this is the whole idea, right. So, therefore, this is what you have and which I can write as 1 minus 1 minus f x raised to n. And so, when you differentiate uh, with respect to x, you get the p d f here and this would be simply minus minus becomes plus. So, n times derivative of this is small f x. So, n f x into 1 minus f x raised to n minus 1. So, this will be a general expression. So, now, uh, what I am trying to say is that you with uh, this expression also and now let us just substitute uh, j equal to 1 here. So, what do you get? This is 1 and so if you substitute in this uh, formula, this will be n c 1 which is n <coughs> then f x and uh, this is i minus 1, uh, 1 minus 1. So, this is uh, 1. So, this is 1 minus f x raised to n minus oh, this is minus j minus 1 how am I getting. Uh, so, this is coming out to be j is 1. So, this is coming out to be n minus 2. Uh, accordingly, see for us it should be uh, 1 minus f x raised to n and uh, uh, yeah, at least from here it appears that this should be uh, this. And so, when I do it n times I differentiate and then I take this. So, it should be n minus 1. So, where is this other one missing? Because you are taking j to be uh, j to be 1. So, are you sure this is n minus j or minus n minus j minus 1? Let us just verify that this is uh, what is the formula, correct formula. I think it has to be n minus j. Yeah, it should be n minus j. 
Yeah, let us just make sure so that uh, we don't make the mistake of n minus j, right? So that see that, that helps to verify. So you see this is n minus j, and therefore j is one, so it will be n minus one. So the both the things match. You can obtain it directly, or you can uh, do it through the formula, the formula that we have obtained. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, um, so once just a simple example to show you. Uh, now let us see. Um, it also helps to write down the joint PDF of all the um, uh, order statistics uh, that you see. Um, actually what is happening is this is some arrangement of the sample values x 1, x 2, x n and the possible arrangements of these n sample values is n factorial. So, one of them will match this order right and so um, you can you can do the thing through the rigorous uh, mathematics by showing that the uh, your uh, R n region can be divided into n factorial uh, regions and each factorial uh, in, in each one of these factorial regions the one of uh, one arrangement of the sample values is there right and so when you do do the uh, transformation uh, because you have to do it over whole of r n so uh, the uh, jacobian will be one of the permutation matrices and the value of the permutation matrix is always one uh, i mean and you take the positive part otherwise the value of the permutation matrix is plus minus 1. So, in without going into all that, we can simply say that uh, the joint density function would be n factorial into you see um, since the variables are independent, the joint density function of the sample values x 1, x 2, x n is nothing but the product of the individual um, density functions right and or maybe if you want to feel good you can, but I am not writing this, I am simply saying this is x 1 and this is x n, but they are the same. So, therefore, I am not writing uh, these indices. So, uh, all of them are the same PDFs, and therefore, uh, this will be n factorial into f x 1 into f x n. This is the whole idea, where x 1 x. So, general expression where x 1 x 2 x n are varying from minus infinity to infinity. right? because uh, after all the order statistic is only one of the arrangements and there are n factorial possible arrangements of the sample values of the n sample values. Okay. So, now uh, to find uh, joint p d f x will be equal to expected value of x y upon expected value of y square into y. So, the minus sign is not there see it gets cancelled out time. So, x i x j then uh, what is happening in this I will integrate this. So, for i minus 1 sample values, the limits of integration will be from minus infinity to x i, because i minus 1 of them have to be less than or equal to x i. For variables between x i and x j, order statistics x i x j, the limits are x i to x j, right. And the um, uh, for variables having values greater than x i, the x j, the limits are from x j to infinity. Right. So, once I do this integration, that means I will be integrating for i minus 1, then for variables between x i and x j, and then for all values of all the variables having values greater than x j. Uh, let me write it this way. Yeah, okay. So, then uh, once you do this, you will get the joint density function of um, remember, because for marginals, when you have the joint density function to obtain a, a p d f of one of them, you would integrate respect to the other one right? and then get the marginal p d f for the for first variable. So, here also we have done the same and therefore, these remain intact and for uh, uh, the remaining see this is f x i raise to i minus 1, because you are integrating from 0 to from minus infinity to x i and for uh, uh, variables between x i and x j, you are integrating from f x i to uh, from f x i to f x j. So, this is j minus i minus 1 and this is 1 minus f x j n minus 1. So, this n minus 2. So, these add up to n minus 2 and then you have the remaining 2 to x i and x j. So, this will give you the joint density function. So, our ultimate aim say therefore, uh, see the range of the sample values is also of lot of interest in many situations. And so, we want to ultimately find out the uh, p d f of uh, the range of the uh, sample values. Okay. So, uh, let me just um, uh, define uh, two random variables here, which are r is x n minus x 1. So, this is the range and v is the largest sample value. Uh, and uh, here of course, uh, you should try to see that you can compute the um, 
uh, PDF of x n directly and then again verify from this formula. Right. So, for, for when you want to find out the uh, p d f of uh, v for of x n, uh, when you say probability x n less than or equal to small x, which would mean that all the sample values are less than or equal to x. And so, you will immediately get this thing to be f x raised to n. So, the, uh, so the cumulative density function of x n will immediately come out to be f x raised to n and then you differentiate. So, n times f x small f x into capital f x raised to n minus 1. So, here you can directly get this also. Anyway, so we have to uh, find out uh, the p d f of capital R. So, can derive the p d f of uh, see x 1 x n. Now, first I need to uh, know the joint p d f of x 1 and x n. Once I obtain that, then I, for these are functions of um, x 1 and x n. So, I will uh, use my transformation formula and get the uh, joint p d f of r and v. And from the joint p d f of r and v, I will then finally, get the p d f of r. This is the whole idea. right? So, um, uh, for to derive the p d f of x 1 and x n, uh, from your uh, this formula, right? I will simply write i as 1 and j as n. So, i 1 this term is gone and here also this term is gone, this term is gone. So, you are left with n factorial upon n minus 2 factorial. So, n factorial upon my n minus 2 factorial, then this is f x n minus f x 1 raised to n minus 2 right and then uh, this is out because n minus n is 0 and so this is fx1 fxn so this is your joint uh, pdf of um, x1 and xn once i have this then i'll make the transformation that i'll write r as xn minus x1 and v as xn so then from here you will get the relationship for so xn comes out to be capital v and x1 comes out to be v minus r Right. And then you write the Jacobian. So, r is my first variable. So, this will be minus 1, 1 and then here it will be 0, 1. So, the Jacobian absolute value is 1. So, now I can get the joint density function of r and v. Okay. So, with Jacobian as 1, absolute value of the Jacobian as 1 and these this transformation that is your x n is v and x 1 is v minus r. In this one, we just substitute for x 1 x n multiply by the Jacobian. So, uh, then your f of uh, f of r v that means, capital R is equal to small r and v small v. Then this function, this p d f of r and v can be obtained from this p d f. So, n into n minus 1 f v minus f v minus r, which is your x 1 raised to n minus 2 and this is f of v minus r f v. Right. And here of course, it is understood that r is greater than 0, because r represents the range and x n is greater than x 1, greater than or equal to x 1. So, uh, this is the case and of course, if uh, range is 0, there is no point. So, we are uh, taking r to be some uh, positive number. Okay. So, therefore, I once I get the joint p d f of r and v, now my interest is in getting the p d f of capital R. So, I will integrate this and uh, uh, in general you will integrate from minus infinity to infinity. Uh, uh, well, uh, why should I say from minus infinity to infinity? It should always be from uh, it should uh, it should be r because you see uh, here your x n is r plus x 1. So, since this is non negative uh, then I mean okay, okay, fine. In general it would be sorry it would be minus infinity because x 1 in general we are allowing x 1 to take uh, vary, vary from minus infinity to the sample size is from minus uh, for uh, for a population which is from minus infinity to infinity. So, in that case this is fine uh, the integral in general we can write as minus infinity to infinity. Now, as a special case consider uh, the uh, case when x i are from uniform 0 1. So, as a special case consider x i i varying from 1 to n uh, from uh, uniform on 0 1. Right. Then uh, this function this p d f will reduce to uh, 
the uh, what have I written here? Yeah, F R R. Yeah, so I'm writing this. Yeah, so the the P D F of uh, the range variable would reduce to n into n minus 1 and now in this case it will be r, because as I am saying now that this is non-negative. If, if all the, the sample values are coming from uniform 0 1, all values are non-negative and therefore, <coughs> this x n has to be greater than or equal to r plus. So, and x n is your v. So, uh, when this values v and this is r, so then uh, v has to be greater than or equal to r. So, now uh, in the joint density function, you are integrating with respect to v uh, to get the p d f of r. So, then that will be the range will be from r to 1, right, because the variables are from 0 to 1. So, then uh, uh, this will become v, this will be v minus r raised to n minus 2 and both the p d f's are 1 1. So, 1 1 d v, this is your this thing and you can see the simplification v cancels out this is r raised to n minus 2 uh, d v. So, the integral here will be v which will be 1 to r 1 minus r. So, therefore, uh, this is your p d f for uh, the range and uh, now you can you know find out the possible. Way. So, so for a sam sample of size 10 from uniform 0 1 the probability that the range is larger than 0 0.8 and so these questions are of a lot of interest. So, you want to find out the range of values that you the sample that you have observed. So, if you are saying that the range is larger than 0 0.8, then you want to compute the probability that capital R is greater than 0 0.8. Therefore, you will integrate this function from 0 0.8 to 1, right. And if you simplify here, you get the answer is 0 0.624, which is a pretty large P, uh, probability of the range values being more than uh, 0 0.8, uh, the, the range of the sample uh, being more than uh, 0. So, another example uh, now from the normal distribution, because I thought we had had enough cases for <laughs> uniform. So, if x 1 and x 2 are uh, identically independently distributed from a normal 0 1, that means the mean is 0 and the variance is 1. Uh, so, this is a sample uh, x 1 x 2 is a sample from normal 0 1. So, find the p d f of x 2 which will represent the max of x 1 and x 2. So, we will do you again obtain this without using any formula. Right. Uh, so, here again as I explained to you that if you want to find the p d f or c d f of the cumulative density function for x 2 second the largest one, then it will be uh, this will be probability x 2 less than or equal to t, which will imply that both the values x 1 and x 2 should be less than or equal to t. right? And since they are independent, this is equivalent to probability x 1 less than or equal to t into probability x 2 less than or equal to t. right? And uh, co coming from uh, t of n your um, n 0 1 will be root 2 pi e raise to minus 1 by 2 t square d t. So, this is our notation for phi t for a normal distribution. So, this is standard normal distribution. So, phi t. So, therefore, this will be phi square t. So, the cumulative density function for the max of two sample values x 1 and x 2 coming from a normal 0 1 is given by phi square t. Okay. So, uh, then uh, if you want to find the p d f, just dis differentiate this, which would be twice phi prime t f t. So, phi prime t will be nothing but the um, normal p d f, which is uh, given by this. So, it will be twice phi t into 1 by root 2 pi e raise to minus half t square. So, minus infinity to t. So, this one can then uh, you know integrate and find out whatever probabilities you are interested in. So, uh, it looks like that at least the normal, uh, if your sample size is uh, sample is from a normal distribution or from a uniform distribution, you can uh, you know easily obtain p d f of the order statistics. In other cases also one can see and of course, there are methods for computing uh, difficult integrals by many other ways by numerical methods. Okay. Uh, now, um, continuing with our joint uh, uh, distribution functions and uh, the other um, important parameters that we need to look at and define here is covariance, variance of sums and correlation. So, this will also have a, a lot of implication in so, here of uh, the proposition. So, before I talk about define the covariance, 
and the uh, variance and then the correlation. A simple proposition, which in fact, uh, there was no need to prove it also, but I will have written it down for completeness sake. X and y are independent. So, if x and y are independent random variables, because this understood random variables, then for any function h and g, for any functions h and g, uh, uh, expectation of g x into h y is expectation of g x into expectation of h y. That means, uh, the independence carries over to uh, the function g x and h also. And so, here um, uh, this is uh, the proof is simple, because if you want to write the expectation of g x h y, uh, it will be minus infinity to infinity minus infinity to infinity g x h y f x comma y d x d y. Right. But since x and y are independent, the joint density function can be written as the product of the marginal densities. And so, here uh, oh, you when you write this as uh, f x and into f y, then I can even separate out the integrals, because it will be minus infinity to infinity g x marginal of x into minus infinity to infinity uh, h y into marginal of y into d y. And so, by definition, this is E g x into E h y. So, once we have that uh, behind us, then we can now talk of uh, define the uh, first of all the covariance. So, the idea co of covariance between two variables x and y is denoted by uh, this is the notation, right, and is defined by the covariance is expectation of x minus E x into y minus E y. Okay. And if you open up this, if you ex expand this expression, this will be x y minus x e y minus y e x plus uh, e x into e y. Now, when I take the expectation inside, it will be expectation of x y, then this will be expectation x into expectation y, right? then this will be minus expectation y into expectation x plus this. So, one of them, the two of these will cancel out each other and you will be left with. So, this is a simpler expression to handle, when you are talking of covariance. So, it is expectation x y minus uh, E x into E y. This is the definition of covariance. And let us see, what does it indicate or why do we. So, now, if x and y are independent, see if x and y are independent, then E of x y will be written as E x into E y. So, then uh, E x into E y minus E x into E y will be 0. So, covariance. Uh, so, therefore, if x and y are independent, it this implies that covariance x y is 0. Okay. But unfortunately, the uh, converse is not true. That is, uh, covariance equal to 0 not does not always imply independence of the variables of the random variables. Okay. And very simple, I tell you that um, the um, converse of this result is not true. Right. So, independence will always imply that the covariance is 0, but um, uh, if the covariance is 0, it need not imply that the uh, variables are independent. Okay. So, let us see, we are defining a random variable x, uh, which takes three values. So, probability x equal to 0 and probability x equal to 1 and probability x equal to minus 1 is equal to 1 by 3. So, all three are equally likely. Then I am defining a random variable y, which is totally dependent on x. So, y is 0, if x is not 0 and y is 1, if x is 0. Right. So, now, if you look at uh, the uh, values of this product, this will always be 0 because y is 0, when x is not 0 and y is 1, if x is 0. So, this product will always be 0. If the product is 0, so the random variable just takes only 0 values. So, then uh, uh, this expectation will be 0, right? because the variable is taking all possible values are 0. So, this is uh, expectation of x y is 0 and you see from here, expectation of x is 0. See, x and z having the same p d f and c d f does not imply that x and z are dependent, but we see here that when given x, z can only take the values x and minus x. We have just seen this and therefore, x and z are completely dependent, because what will be the expectation of x? So, expectation x will 3. So, this is 0. 
So, expectation of x is 0. Therefore, from the covariance formula, this is 0, this is 0. So, for the uh, whole thing is 0 and uh, so covariance 0, but we know that x and y are not independent. Yes, x and y are not independent. You can, uh, if you want, you can uh, do the this way. What was the, um, yeah? You, um, I mean, okay. What will you use? You will you you can show that probability uh, x y. So because they are discrete random variables, so all possible values. So in fact, x y takes all zero values. So therefore, here you have to show that. Um, Okay, uh, how how would you want to go about doing it? Uh, normally, for a discrete thing, you want to show that for all possible values uh, of this product, the probability uh, so for all of them is not equal to the product of individual probabilities. But here um, you will have to yeah we'll have to write out in detail. But anyway, you can as it is there's not much to really prove because the way you're defining your y, it is totally dependent on x. Yes. Okay. So, um, uh, that gives you the, uh, uh, so therefore, um, covariance 0 does not in imply independence of the random variables. Okay. So, um, continue with this, let us take another example here. Uh, let x 1 be sin 2 pi u and x 2 is cos 2 pi u. So, two different functions of a uniform random variable uh, 0 1. So, u is your uniform random variable on 0 1. We consider two random variables obtained by taking functions uh, sin 2 pi u and cos 2 pi u. Right. Now, let us see if you compute expectation x 1, uh, this will be 0 to 1 sin 2 pi u d u, which will be minus 1 by 2 pi cos 2 pi u from 0 to 1, which is 0, because cos 2 pi uh, minus cos pi uh, cos 0, both are 1. So, this becomes 0. Similarly, you can show that expectation of x 2 will also be 0. right? And when you compute the, <coughs> so therefore, the covariance of x 1, x 2 will reduce to uh, just expectation of x 1, x 2, but expectation of x 1, x 2 will be, you see sin 2, 2 pi u into cos 2 pi u will be a sin of 4 pi u divided by 2. So, again this is a, a same kind of function from 0 to 1, so that value will also be 0. Right. So, but then x 1 plus 2, because x 2 will be 1 minus x 1 square under root. So, therefore, um, uh, the covariance is 0, it does not certainly imply uh, independence of x 1 and x 2, which you can see otherwise also, because x 1 square plus x 2 square is 1. I will come back to this example in a while. Now, uh, properties, um, some which we can immediately show properties of covariance function. So, this is um, uh, first of all, it does not matter what order you write covariance x comma y is same as covariance y comma x, because it is expectation of x minus e x into y minus e y. So, the order is not important. Uh, then, uh, when you take both x and y to be the same, then covariance x x, because that is uh, expectation of x minus e x. So, square this will be a covariance x. So, therefore, this is equal to variance x. And uh, if you take uh, covariance a x comma y, then um, again by definition, because uh, a will be here, a will be here also, you will be able to take it out. And so, it will be a times covariance x comma y. And the, then you can apply this principle in general, because we have already shown it for this. And then since because of this, so you can show that if you take summation sigma a i x i, i varying from 1 to m, sigma j varying from 1 to n, b j y j. Uh, then again, uh, you know, taking all possible products here, it will and covariance you can take it, because it is expectation function, which is linear, I can take it inside uh, the summation sign. So, this can be written as this, and uh, then uh, uh, this is uh, summation side will be outside, and then here this is a i b j will come outside, and this will be covariance of x i x j. So, this is the general expression and I will show you a nice application of this after a while, okay. uh, how you can use this formula to simplify some computations. Okay. Uh, now, uh, the moment you define the covariance function, you immediately uh, uh, have uh, define the correlation coefficient uh, rho and uh, 
we will see uh, the implications and the uh, usefulness of this uh, parameter. So, um, if x 1 and x 2 are two jointly distributed random variables, then the correlation coefficient rho is covariance x 1 comma x 2 divided by um, uh, variance of x 1 into variance of x 2. Okay. Now, of course, uh, this definition is valid only when uh, x sigma x 1 and sigma x 2 are finite and in fact, they should not be zeros, because if your x 1 and x 2 or any of them is a constant variable taking only constant values that means, no randomness about it, then uh, your sigma x 1 will be 0 and so you cannot divide by 0. So, this quantity is defined only when sigma x 1 and sigma x 2 are finite and they are not 0 and also um, uh, in fact, this applies to your covariance function also that expectation x 1 and expectation x 2 should also be defined. So, in fact, I should when I define the covariance function, I should have uh, spelled out that uh, the definition is valid as long as your expectation functions exist uh, are defined. Okay. Now, uh, the you can see you can immediately uh, see that here uh, the covariance function, uh, the uh, correlation coefficient can be defined nicely in this way and once you define it this way, then it becomes dimensionless, right, because I have standardized the variant x minus e x divided by de, uh, defined uh, divided by the variant standard deviation and y minus e y divided by its standard deviation. So, this becomes if you remember how we standardize your normal variate. So, the same thing we are doing and once you do this, then this becomes uh, dimensionless right now if you want we can uh, you can tr you can try it out here because uh, see the covariance you're defining as expectation of x minus e x and y minus e y right and so this you're defining it as this and um, um, so here also it's a, and then uh, the, for the covariance you're simply taking rho x and then rho y so by this definition, I can combine, I can take this inside. So, there is no big deal. I mean, I am not doing anything big manipulation here, simply taking this inside, because uh, we have already seen that uh, the constants can be taken outside or inside, does not matter. So, therefore, now this becomes a standardized uh, dimension. So, this is dimensionless definition of the correlation. Okay, now, we use the word uh, so, if uh, see rho x 1 x 2 0 obviously, uh, is possible when the covariance is 0. So, essentially when the covariance is 0, we use the word that uh, x 1 and x 2 are uncorrelated. So, and you have already seen uh, that uh, uh, two variables being uncorrelated does not mean independence. right? So, therefore, we have coined this word that um, uh, two variables are uncorrelated if and only if uh, the uh, uh, correlation coefficient as we call it rho is 0. So, this is our terminology that um, x 1 and x 2 are uncorrelated provided uh, the covariance is 0 between the two random variables. Okay. And um, we will um, now through Schwarz inequality and so on, I will show you that um, uh, the, the uh, number rho measures the uh, relationship again between uh, it tries to. So, uh, co covariance simply showed you that uh, whether um, I mean if the variables are independent then the covariance is 0. Now, here rho gives you much more information than that. It will show you uh, that um, see we will first of all uh, show that rho is less than or equal to 1 always, because we have standardized the thing divided by the standard deviations. And then uh, we will show that if rho is equal to 1, then they are perfectly related the two variables and th this actually measures the uh, relationship, but again here we will try to show you that uh, uh, it may uh, it may not always measure the uh, it may it may predict linear relationships very well, but not uh, 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 non linear relationships, but so we will come to that anyway. So, uh, this is a very useful parameter and uh, here also I think uh, the same example I was trying to take is that. Um, if your x 1 is x and x 2 is x x square. So, it is the square of x, then see that this is the relationship between the two variables x 2 is equal to x 1 square right? and the covariance will come out to be. <coughs> so, covariance will be expectation of x 1 cube minus expectation x 1 into expectation x 1 square. 
Now, if I take uh, x 1 to be a variable, which has which takes two values x 1 is 1 and x 1, uh, x 1 is minus 1, both the values it takes with probability half, then you see expectation x 1 is also 0 and expectation of x 1 cube is also 0, because this will also be uh, 1 into half, then minus 1 into half and this will also be 1 into half and minus 1 into half and this will be 0. So, therefore, your covariance is 0 and that will imply. So, this will imply that your rho is 0. right? So, the variables you are saying are uncorrelated, but certainly they are not um, uh, they are not independent. Now, another um, uh, immediate use of uh, this unco the word uncorrelated uh, we can show here while computing the variance of uh, sum of two variables and this will this can then be extended to many more um, you know, when you have sums of more than two variables. So, here for example, the variance of x 1 plus x 2, you will define as x 1 minus e x 1. So, now, uh, we will compute the expected value of expected value of x given uh, capital Y. So, this is and therefore, the y values of y will vary. So, when you write this expression, uh, computing it through expected value conditional expectation of x for different values of y. So, then this will be see conditional expectation of x given y equal to 1. So, that into probability y equal to 1 plus conditional expectation of x given y equal to 2 into probability y equal to 2 plus conditional expectation of x given y equal to 3 into probability y equal to 3. right? And this because we have made these computations. So, you see that uh, 2.7 uh, into probability of y equal to 1, uh, which is uh, 0.2 from here right? and then plus uh, 2.88 is the prob conditional expectation of uh, x given y equal to 2. So, 2.88 into 0 0.5, which is uh, 2.88 into 0 0.5 plus uh, conditional expectation of x given y equal to 3, uh, which is 2.833. So, that into 0.3 this is 0.3 okay, and this adds up to 2.82, which is the same as this, which we computed from here. right? Okay. So, uh, this is what I want to show you and therefore, here remember even if somewhere in the text sometimes uh, you find that uh, uh, the uh, capital letter is missing, whichever the conditional. So, whenever we talk of expectation, then the whole idea is that this expectation of x given capital Y when I write the random variable here, then this is a random variable and so I can talk in terms of uh, expectation of uh, this random variable and this will be of course, the probability that means the expectation the, the value of E x can given a particular value of y. So, uh, you compute this expectation for a particular value of y multiplied by the probability of that particular value of y and then you add up for all possible values of y and then you get this. So, therefore, uh, you can break up the uh, expectation x also in this way. Okay. So, expectation x in other words we are saying is expectation and then again expectation conditional y and this e x 1 plus x 2 minus e x 2 whole square. right? And when you open up the square, it will be x 1 minus e x 1 whole square plus x 2 minus e x 2 whole square plus twice expectation of x 1 minus e x 1 into x 2 minus e x 2. So, this is variance x 1, this is variance x 2 and this is covariance x 1 x 2. So, now from here it follows that covariance um, that variance of x 1 plus x 2 is variance x 1 plus variance x 2, if and only if covariance uh, x 1 x 2 is 0. So, if and only if like if covariance x 1 x 2 is 0, then you get this and if uh, you are saying that this variance is equal to this, then covariance must be 0. So, this is if and only if relationship and for this result to be true, it is not necessary for x 1 x 2 to be independent. See what earlier when we had talked of independence and then I talked of sum of two independent random variables, I had shown you that this will be equal to this, but now we are saying since we have defined this term um, uncorrelated. So, what we are saying is that um, for variance of uh, x 1 plus x 2 to be equal to variance x 1 plus variance x 2, it is enough that uh, the two um, that the covariance is 0 or the variables are uncorrelated. It is not necessary for x 1 x 2 to be independent. Um, um, it is enough it is enough if 
x 1 and um, x 2 are uncorrelated. Okay, I cannot write it here, but uh, this is uncorrelated. Okay. So, this is one advantage, uh, one use of uh, this function. We will talk about this uh, some more in the next lecture. Okay, I think.